Hello everyone, I'm Bra Mithra. I just want to start off by saying thank you to everybody who's been showing this series and this channel so much support. I know I just posted some reviews and I hope those reviews for the King of Death stuff helped you decide whether or not eBay prices are worth paying um, or whether or not you'd even really like the expansions. So I hope everybody got use from those. And I, always, I just want to thank everybody for posting comments on all the playthrough videos. Sometimes I make little minor rules mistakes. I mean, sometimes even big rules mistakes, who am I kidding? But uh, I always try to fix them however it is I can. So in the last video, someone pointed out that I made a mistake with a narcissistic disorder. Uh, the way it read was just weird, and I was just trying to keep the video, the pace moving. And I accidentally archived the disorder rather than the headpiece location. So to fix that, I have to spend uh, the elytra which I was saving from the dung beetle knight, one of the resources. That's a resource that could be spent as any of the three, as a, as a bone, an organ, or a hide. So I'll have to spend that to create the rawhide headband again, because that would have been archived when I got narcissistic, since that character was wearing a headpiece when he gained the disorder, which was a mistake. Instead of archiving the disorder, I should have archived the headband. So that's how I'll fix that, and I'll go back and I'll remove a different disorder and put narcissistic on the character. That way, uh, I'll remember that he can never wear headpieces. So uh, thank you so much to everybody who leaves comments like that. Thanks to everybody in just in general for all the support. It's very humbling. And it's just, I'm so glad that these episodes uh, provide entertainment for people. It's just, it's very humbling. So thank you very much. This episode will be fighting a level 2 Gorm. So hopefully everything goes all right. Thank you much. Enjoy the episode. So here we go. All set up to hunt the level 2 Gorm. We got Lightning, Thunder, Enri, and Kenna. So first we've got two Gorm events, then two regular Gorm, and then Overwhelming Darkness. So we're going to go with Enri first to do the Gorm hunt event. So here is the Gorm hunt event. We've got the darkness ahead is filled with steady flashes of green light. Enormous piles of jagged bones forebodingly line the horizon in an unbroken line. Inhuman, mournful laughter echoes through the air. If any survivors, if any survivor has five plus hunt experience and three courage, you press forward, fearfully sneaking through the bone wall. All survivors gain plus one courage. Okay, uh, we do have that, because we are taking Kenna with us. Kenna has max courage. She's already seen the truth, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She's got 10 hunt experience. So everyone's going to gain one courage. Uh, except for Kenna can't gain any more. So uh, that's good. So that was the first one. Okay, everyone gains one courage. It doesn't seem to affect anybody. Yeah, it doesn't seem. No one triggers anything. Okay. So that was the first event. Okay. So that was Enri. Now let's do lightning for the, uh, no. Kenna for the next Gorm Hunt event. Okay. Flatten Earth. Survivors lose their quarry's trail in a field of stone faces so badly crushed by the passing of gorm herds that nothing remains but a carpet of fine pebbles. Roll 1d10. All right. Oops. It's eight. Distracted, move the gorm one space away from the survivors on the hunt board. Right? Yeah, distracted. Move the Gorm one space away from the survivors on the hunt. Okay, so we're moving the Gorm one space away. Okay. That's the 
end of that hunt event. Alright, that sucks. Now we're going to get one more random one. Okay, so we've done Enri, we've done Kenna. Um, now we're going to do Thunder for the random hunt event. Which is, yep, just a random hunt event. And it will be 77. Okay, 77. Sinkhole. A gaping sinkhole suddenly opens under the survivors, revealing a swirling black pool of ichor beneath them. Each survivor rolls 1d10. The lowest scoring survivor becomes a straggler. And then each straggler rolls 1d10. If any survivors have a whip. Throw a line of the straggler. Each straggler adds plus one to their roll. Okay, let me just quickly look. I don't think we have any explorers. Yes. Or no, tank, uh, explorer, right? That's the one that makes it so... Oh no, prepared is the one with the... Uh... So we don't have anyone who's protected against straggler. Okay. First, in order, we go lightning. So a three... Thunder, five, Enri, six, Kenna, no, two, Kenna is the straggler, that's not good, it's really bad, actually, um, okay, uh, now, it's not, an, she is an explorer, but this is not an investigate table, alright, so she's the straggler, now she rolls a 1d10. Oh my, a lantern 10. Good, this better be good because after a monumental effort, the other survivors pull you free. Someone is clinging tightly to your feet. Plus one population. As they retreat to your settlement, each survivor gain or each su each survivor suffers one brain event damage. Why? <laughs> Why would people suffer brain event damage for fine? Oh, okay, whatever. Um. All right, so um, plus one population. I'm just going to write that down. I'm not going to create someone right now. I'll do it in the settlement event. I'm just going to make a note of it. Plus one population. And then everybody takes one brain event damage. Okay. So that brings lightning to six. Thunder to one. Oh no, Thunder actually to zero. Henry to zero. And Kenna to six. Okay. So we have two people at zero. Okay. So that was that. I made a note of the plus one population. All right. Uh, that was Thunder. So now we have no choice but with Lightning for this hunt event, and it is a random hunt event. Uh, 50, exactly. Okay, so 50. Uh, Fifty. A crude iron cage swings from the branches of a massive tree. As the survivors approach, a man calls out to them from the cage, pleading to be freed. Survivors may pass by or suffer one brain event damage as the prisoner weeps and pleads. If the survivors choose to free him, the event revealer rolls 1d10. So the event revealer, this would have to be lightning in this case. Um, survivors may pass him by and... Okay, so it would cost one event damage or... Okay, so I'll just I'll just not do the uh, thing. I'm not going to take any more brain damage. So yeah, okay. So here we go. A three. Uh, the prisoner is thankful and follows the survivors until they rest. When they awake, each survivor loses one random resource if they had any. Okay, we don't have any resources, so whatever. 
Okay, so nothing happens. Uh, now we can reset. So, now that he's moved back, how do I want to do this? Hmm. I guess we'll start with Kenna again, because I don't want any random events to go to Kenna. So... Mating fields. Ahead, the ground is covered in mounds of foul-smelling corrosive vomit. Any of the survivors may choose to investigate. Each that does gains plus one courage and rolls on the table. Okay, so let's briefly just look at this table here. Well, first, is there anybody who could trigger something from gaining a courage? No one could trigger bold. So, now let's look at the... Or, okay, so it would be a random hunt event if I don't investigate, which is bad. I don't want to do any random hunt events. Uh, so at legs, brain event damage, or we gain a random gorm resource. So, there's no reason for, well, what's he, for 9 plus, okay. So, Kenna is an explorer, and explorers gain, uh, is it plus 2? I forget, let me see. Yeah, so she would gain plus 2. So if she could roll a 7 plus to gain the Gorm resource. Mm. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess... What's the worst? So a brain event damage is likely. Or one damage to the leg location. Okay, so we'll just do it, I guess with... I will just do it with everyone. So a 7. That's the... So this is for... Lightning was first. Brain event damage, she's down to 5. Okay, thunder. Um, so for 1 event damage to the leg location. So he's down to three on the legs. Uh, Henry. She gets one brain damage, but she didn't have any insanity anyway, so can't suffer uh, severe injuries on the hunt, so she's just still at zero. And now Kenna gets the plus two. She got it anyway, so let's get a random Gorm resource. And that one. And be the stout kidney. Okay, so we got a stout kidney. I'll just keep this here. So we remember that we've already drawn it out of the deck. And that's the end of this. Okay. Now don't want lightning to do a random hunt event so she'll be the one to walk on overwhelming darkness now we can roll on the overwhelming darkness table okay overwhelming darkness table let's roll here so we have song of the brave which lets everybody walk the um, path of the brave. So everyone can walk path of the brave. So that's what we'll be doing. Okay, so path of the brave. Here we go. First with lightning. Massive whale swims overhead. Your guts quiver with booming cries. You vomit in fear. But keep a brave face. Gain minus one evasion token. Uh, everybody gains plus one survival at the end. So, Lightning got a minus one evasion token. 
Now thunder. Is that the same thing? Uh, no, thunder's gonna take a damage to his arms. This sucks because he's the tank. He's taking a lot of damage from the stupid hunt. So yeah, with your lantern held high, you cut a path through the teeming darkness. Suffer one event damage to your arms. Okay, now for Enry. Ooh, that's no good. You punch yourself in the face, chasing away doubt. Gain minus one accuracy token. Okay. And now Kenna. Six. Uh, she also gets the minus one evasion token. Okay. So... That was lightning. Now we have one more random hunt event, which we'll do with Enri. Okay, random hunt event. Uh, 91. Ninety-one. The beginning. Survivors stumble upon the scene of settlement's first hunt. Whether they've seen it themselves or heard it through stories, they immediately recognize it. Seeing the spot of their settlement's first triumph is electrifying. I wonder if I actually have anybody... No. <laughs> Nobody here is from the first time. <laughs> Each survivor gains plus one survival. The settlement has Saga. They all gain plus one courage? Do they have Saga? I forget if I have Saga. I do have Saga. Oh, I think now we're actually going to trigger Bold on some people. Um, yeah, so we're going to trigger Bold on Enri. We're going to trigger Bold on Thunder. So Henry and Thunder are going to trigger bold, okay? If the settlement has storytelling, each survivor gains plus one understanding. I don't think we have storytelling. So we have Saga. We do not have storytelling, okay. So now we trigger bold for uh, Thunder first. Okay, bold for thunder on the hunt. So, 1d10 thunder. A 9. Gain a permanent strength for thunder and prepared. One permanent strength for thunder. Prepared. Now for Enri, same thing. Plus one understanding and prepared. All right, um, and then whoever moves in. So now we start the showdown with the Gorm. I already drew, so the Gorm always starts with tall grass. I already drew that. We drew acanthus plants and we drew an ore vein. And then also because of the screaming bracers, there'll be four acanthus plants. So that will be the terrain, and I will now set up for the showdown. Here we are, all set up for the showdown with the level 2 Gorm. As you can see, um, the level 2 Gorm starts with 9 basic, 5 advanced. He's got 9 movement, 11 toughness. He's got plus 1 speed, plus 1 damage. Then, Whenever you're departing, you do a Fetid Grotto before the showdown starts. So we'll do Fetid Grotto, and then he's also got Gorm's Den and Muth. Ah, Muth's in place. In play. Ah, in play. 
So, this all survivors with three or less hunt experience gain minus two accuracy but plus two strength. So, that will be Lightning who has three, Thunder who has three, Henry who has zero. So, they're all going to get minus two accuracy, but they're all going to get plus two strength. So, what I will do is I will add the plus two strength, or first off, So the things that took the minus tokens that happened during um, the Overwhelming Darkness, we're going to remove those with Song of the Brave. So it says, during Overwhelming Darkness, story of... Or no, where is it? Survivors on arrival, each non-death survivor may remove one negative token. So they're all going to remove their negative tokens from Overwhelming Darkness. So that will just leave these for the minus two accuracy. So the plus three strength will go to everybody but Kenna and minus two accuracy to everybody plus minus, uh, without Kenna. And then here is Gorm's Den, which will be the awning maw of the Gorm's Den belches dizzy and fumes. Survivors cannot surge unless they spend an additional survival. So the surge is when they can gain an extra action. So that is everything for the Gorm itself back those are in play so now we will do the fetid grotto arrival so for the fetid grotto here so when you approach the cave gorm's den can be tracked by smell from a great distance your eyes water and your stomach twists and knots as you approach so each survivor will roll 1d10. So here we go. First, lightning. It's a 4 for lightning. Entrance to the Gorm Den swims with putrid vapor. As the survivors consult amongst themselves, and her, uh, you decide combat the miasma with a little ingenuity, putting your waist armor on your head. Add your current waist armor points to your head armor points and reduce your waist armor to 0. You gain plus two insanity and two survival. So lightning will go up to seven insanity. She can't gain any more survival. She's at max. And now her head will go to eight. But her waist will go to zero. So her head is at eight. But her waist is at zero. All right. That was lightning. Now thunder. Six. That's the same exact thing. So he's going to gain plus two insanity. He goes up to three insanity. His waist. Uh, same thing. He's going to go to eight on his head. And zero on his waist. Now Henry is again the same exact thing. She will gain two insanity. She will go to two on her head and zero on her waist. Now for Kenna, a nine. Uh, tears streaming and lungs burning, you stumble into the den. Roll a d10. Okay. So we're rolling another d10. She got a 7. You fall to your knees, sinking into the muck. When you regain your footing, you find yourself clutching a clean bleach bone, gain one monster bone, basic resource. Okay. So she is going to gain the basic resource here. One monster bone right there, which we will put over here with the stout kidney. All right, so that is Fetid Grotto. Now we've done that, and we will have to do Fetid Grotto once again when we uh, have the end, wow, whatever that may be. <laughs> All right, so... Um, okay. Now to start the actual showdown itself, we draw the first AI card. 
which is going to be body check. Now remember he's got plus one speed, plus one damage to everything. So this is a random survivor in range, which is a speed one, accuracy two plus, damn it, uh, target suffers bash and knockback seven. So a random survivor in range. Oops, I almost picked that up. <laughs> so random survivor in range. Let's go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine or ten. I re-roll. So it's going to be. Uh, is that lightning? Yeah, that's lightning. So it's movement nine. So easily gets there. I mean, yeah, it's easily to get there. So. Now, what was it? It is a speed two. Yeah, he's got plus one speed. So it's a speed two, accuracy two plus, but this she's got plus one evasion. Um, there is a break here. Could she have gotten out of the way? Actually, let me see if I could have one, two, or it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. And then I could dash. Actually, yeah, so I'm gonna dash. I could have gotten out of the way. He's only got a movement of nine. So yeah, let's dash. So she'll spend one survival to dash right now at this break. So he's gonna move his one, two, three, four, five. And then she'll dash to go one, two, three, four, Five all the way to here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put her to here. Hmm. Yeah, so we'll do that. It's going to put him to there. Now, then she's out of the way. One space away, she can't target him. Then, or would it have been better to maybe take the damage? Nah. Okay, so we'll do that. That's the first AI card. Now, with this, he now performs at the end of each monster turn, you perform Wretch, which is move the Gorm two spaces backwards. Survivors in the vomit zone suffer two damage to a random hit location that ignores armor. Okay, so he's going to move back to one, two, and the vomit zone, as you can see, is four squares. So this does one, two, three, four. It's going to get her. She's going to suffer two damage that ignores armor. That's two damage to the waist, so that's a heavy injury to the waist. Okay. And that is the end of the Gorm's turn. Now, we will so I think we will move with Lightning. Where will we move to? Um, who will headband? Actually, let's. Okay, so we're going to start with Enri here, who's going to do one, two, three, four. So she's in the grass, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So she can hit the corn from here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. So she can be in the grass. She'll use the Vespertine Bow, which is the range nine, but gives four plus accuracy. And she'll use the Clawhead Arrow with that. Now, okay, so the Clawhead Arrow has six plus accuracy, so with the range plus four, it's a two plus speed one to hit with the Clyde Arrow. That is a hit. 
on the location card. Which is the first one here is the mammoth skull. Now, so that's a wound reaction. So that gives it a minus one evasion token. So let's give minus one evasion to the Gorm here, minus one evasion. Now, um, oh wait, for some reason I was thinking it was the other way around. So she actually would have only hit on a four plus because of the minus two accuracy. For some reason I was thinking it was plus two accuracy, minus two strength, but it's the other way around. So she actually gets plus two strength. So the claw headed arrow has six strength. The Gorm has a toughness of 11, so that's a 5 to wound, just from the Clotted Arrow. She's got a natural 1 strength, that brings it down to 4 to wound, plus the 2 strength that she got for the Must. So that's 3 to wound, right? So 3, 9, 2 to wound. So this is a 2 to wound, and then she's critting on 8, 8 plus. So that's a wound. Uh, turn the Gorn to face the opposite board edge and full move forward in a straight line. Okay, well that's one wound, so we'll remove the wound. Now, let's do this, which will be turn the Gorn to face the opposite board edge, like that. Full move forward in a straight line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep, so he's going to all the way to there and stop. And that is that. Alright. So, interesting because can Kenna do anything now? One, two, three, four, five. She cannot do anything. So let's get that Orbane. One, two, three, four. Okay. Orbane. Kenna here. So five. Uh, one iron strange resource. Okay. So that's the ore vein. We'll put that away. I'll put this here to remind me we did get an iron. And she moved four squares, so she gains her momentum token because she has propulsion drive. All right. Now, let's, I guess we rawhide headband and maybe cat eye circle it. So we'll rawhide headband first here with thunder. One, two, three, four, five. Get him into the grass here. Um, rawhide headband now. So it looks like we got a mood. So. Probably going to put the wallop first. That way we can discard the mood. So that's definitely going to happen. <laughs> We're going to put wallop on top and discard the mood. So closest threat in field of view, in range. Otherwise it's a random survivor in range. So he's not facing anybody. So his field of view is uh, going to be everyone. So closest threat is going to be or it's got to be in range does it say in yeah it has to be in range so because is anybody nine squares away one two three four five six seven eight nine no one two three four five six seven eight nine no one is nine squares away so he's going to illuminate so with illuminate well assuming i don't move because she still has to go so let me just make sure i move her someplace that's not nine squares right now just get her over to here. And then she's going to cat eye circle it. But So he's now for sure going to illuminate. So we'll put the wall up on top and the mood on bottom. And now he's going to illuminate, which will be the Gorm's bulb increases in intensity, subtly making the darkness light. Until the end of the next round, all survivors are now threats, even if they are knocked down. Or insane survivors are thrown into wild fits, they are knocked down. Okay, so he's gonna illuminate and that's really not gonna do anything because we have a fist and tooth master. 
So everyone gets a stand at the start of the survivor's turn. So uh, Illuminate's not going to do anything. I mean, it is going to do something, but they're just going to stand. So uh, that's what will happen. Now we'll cat eye circle it. Look at the next three monster hit locations. Two, three. These are all failure reactions. Um, and they all have critical hits. So, uh, you know what that means. <laughs> that means we're going to be shooting with Enri, the bow user. She's not as good as the other two bow users, but, you know, what can I do? So, these are all failure reactions. Uh, we'll just put the one with Wretch on top. Yeah, so we'll put the one with Wretch on top because we'll make sure to move him closer to the arrow user so it doesn't cancel any hits. Okay. That's the end of the survivor's turn. We'll draw the AI card. We know what it is. It's going to wallop which will be closest threat in field of view, in range. No one's in range. So, random survivor in range. Again, no one's in range, so he's going to illuminate. And now everyone is a threat, which is fine. They all were anyway. And Kenna's going to be knocked down because she's insane. Thunder and Lightning are both knocked down because they're insane. Okay, now at the end of his turn, he's going to perform Wretch, which will be two spaces backwards. One, two. So there he is, two spaces backwards. And then he just vomits in front of him and does nothing. Okay, now... Survivor's turn. Those three people stand back up again. Fist and Tooth Mastery. Okay, let's decide here. Now we know he's going to do that Wretch 1 reaction on a failure, but if it does cause him to move, he'll back up too. 1, 2. We'll put him here. So I need to get in this position... One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. This would put him... So if I stand... Where was it? One, two, three, four, four. If I stand here, one, two, three, four... She can hit him here, and then when he retches, two, three, five, she can hit him here. Okay. So that's where she's going to go. Is that right? One, two, three, four, no, five. One, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. So she'll go there. Now she'll use her Vespertine bow. Let's do this the right way this time. Should have been minus two accuracy. So Vespertine bow hits on a six plus with minus two accuracy. It's a eight plus to hit. It's rough. It's rough. So that's only one hit. So we know this is going to be Wretch. Or the failure one that, that's Wretch. That will cause him to back up. Which is fine. It will get him closer to the tank and stuff. So. Now she gets plus two strength. So this is a six strength. Then plus three is nine. So she just. Yeah three plus. And three plus to wound. Eight plus to crit. So that's a wound. So it's not a failure. So he doesn't back up. Unfortunately, it's also not a crit, so that's a wound. Um, she could surge for two. Yeah, what the hell? She's going to surge for two survival. It brings her down to four. And she'll shoot again because I know there's no trap there, so really take advantage. I'm not going to kid I circle it yet. I'll wait for her to shoot before I kid I circle it. Okay. So, uh, 8 plus to hit. Uh, and one hit again, but what, I mean, one hit's a hit, right? Again, this is a failure, so it's a 3 plus with a 8 plus to crit. So it's a 9, that is actually a crit, it's not a failure. Uh, what's this crit do? 
Blow ruins the Gorm's eyesight. The monster gains minus one accuracy. I would actually have minus one evasion, but it's not like I was rolling close on these rolls anyway. But I rolled like a ten and two threes, and the last one was like a five, a four, and a ten. Uh, so minus one accuracy. That's good. Minus one accuracy. This does not stay in play, but it is another wound. Okay, now... I removed the wound, or the mood, because I knew the mood was coming up and I now removed it. So, Kenna, can you do anything if I were to dash? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Even if I were to dash, Kenna couldn't get there in time. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll just get one of these acanthus plants. So, acanthus plants. Now, it kind of gets a plus two because of the screening bracers. So, an 11. Find one fresh acanthus. Again, same with the iron. Just put this here. Um... She needed to move four squares, so what I'm actually going to, she's going to do one, two, three, she's going to move to here. That's her four squares, now she's got two momentum tokens. Okay, um, now is when I should probably cat, or not cat eye circle it. I mean, I, sh I should do that, but I meant rawhide headband to see what he's going to do. So we're going to rawhide headband here with thunder before we move to look at the top two AI cards. Two. There's another mood. So the mood's going to go on the bottom again. <laughs> just because otherwise he's going to end up drawing this anyway. So he's definitely going to do scratch. So the mood goes on the bottom. So this will be closest threat facing in range. So he's not facing anybody. Um, not even Kenna here. Should I have done that? Now, well... Too late now. Let's we'll see who he's going to target if it's not. Then it's closest threat in field of view regardless of range. Okay, so then it's going to be closest threat field of view regardless of range. So Kenna is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So she is in range. She's nine, 10 squares away. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He's 11 squares away. So if he moves to here, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now he's closest. So he's going to move to there, still within the grass. And Henry is going to dash. Spending one survival, bringing her down to 3. One, two, three, four, five, putting her back in the grass. Now he is the closest threat in field of view. So it's going to pick him. So scratch on top. Okay. So what is that going to do? That's going to move him one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to put him, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's regardless, it's the same way. So we'll move him so he faces this way, attacks, then backs up too, and retches. And that will keep her out of retch. Yes, if I put her here, she's out of retch. Because he's going to move here, and then it will be these four spaces directly in front of him. Okay, now she will can I circle it. Let's look at the next three. Um, okay, so these are both failure reactions again with criticals. This one, the third one, however, if you attack from the Gorm's flank, gain plus two strength when attempting to wound. So I would love to put that one on top. So that's what we're going to do. The other two are failure reactions, which I can't do anything about anyway if I miss. So... Now we know that the first hit location is going to benefit someone attacking from the flank. Okay, that's the end of the survivor's turn. 
Now let's do the Gorm, draw the first card. Again, scratch here, we already know. Closest threat facing in range, no one is in facing. So then closest threat in field of view, which is everybody. And then, so he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and put himself right here. Yeah, right. Yeah, because he was here. Let me make sure I do this right. Okay. So I've always thought that turning to face is free. That's not part of the movement. So turning to face is a thing that he can do that for free. Now he'll move his eight. One, two, or nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so that is right. So he goes right to there. Ugh, stupid thingy. Okay. That's right. Um, now, it's a speed 2 because he's got plus 1 speed, but he's going to get minus 1 accuracy. So it's going to be a 2 plus, then a 3 plus because he's got minus 1 accuracy. Uh, the grass is going to get two more evasion, so that's a five plus, and then he's got four evasion, so it's a nine plus. Two speed, nine plus. Nothing. It's two misses. Okay. That's the end of this card. He's done no damage. Now he will do his uh, wretch. Just backing up two, one, two, and then one, two, three, all the way out to here, the four. So they suffer two damage to a random hit location that ignores armor. Ugh. That's all I seem to be rolling. So that's a heavy. Again, that would knock him down because of the heavy, but fist and tooth. He gets to stand. So, it's the end of Gorm's turn. Now, can get plus two strength with a flank. So, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we'll put lightning here. One, two, three, four, five. That's the flank. Okay, so she is using Fist and Tooth. Now, Lightning is Monster Claw style fighting art. So, we can, she's got minus two accuracy from the trait that's in play. So, she's got natural one accuracy with the Monster Claw style. Or she's got a natural two accuracy, so it's a wash with the trait that's in place from the Gorm. Then she gets plus one accuracy with the Monster Claw style and Savage to the Fist and Tooth. So it's going to be plus one accuracy and Fist and Tooth is a A plus, so that's going to be a seven plus two speed. And he's got minus one evasion, so it's a six plus two speed. Oh man, that's actually two hits. Um, okay. One, two. I didn't think she'd get two hits. I knew, so the first one, we'll do this one first. So the flank. So, if you attack from the Gorm's flank, gain plus two strength when attempting to wound. So we'll do that one first. Okay, so... Monster Clark style gives her plus one strength. She's got one natural strength. Then she's going to get plus two strength tokens from being quixotic because she's insane and yeah so the monster claw style total of three the one natural 
one from the Monster Claw style, one from Quixotic. That's three strength, plus the two from the trait. That's five strength, plus two from this, that's going to be seven strength, and then she crits on a nine plus. So, seven strength, he's got eleven toughness, so that's a four to wound, or a nine to crit. Oh my, it's a crit. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, so this is a crit. So this is a persistent injury, so it's gimped. But... Okay, so that's going to stay in play. It's going to do one damage uh, to get rid of that mood, because we know what card that is. Now, she uh, Monster Claw style makes all of her attacks savage. So if she wounds now, she's going to do an extra damage. Um, it's after you crit, so it doesn't count on that one, but this will do extra damage. So this will be a crit on a 9, and let's recalculate the strength. She's got 5 strength, uh, toughness 11, 6 plus to wound 9 to crit. Uh, that's not a crit, unfortunately, but... Um, so it's not a failure, but that's going to be a wound. But it's going to be 2 wounds because of Savage from the Monster Fighting Claw style. Okay. Hmm. Should I surge? I guess, what the hell, right? I guess I'll surge. She'll spend two survival to surge. Brings her down to three. Um, she's the one... Yeah, she's the one with the cat eye circlets. So I've only... I've seen the next card. Oh, what the hell, I'm going to Surge because she does a ton of damage. She's got Savage right now. So yeah, she's going to Surge. That will do Fist and Tooth again. Two speed. Uh, eight plus to hit. She's got plus one accuracy. So it's a seven plus to hit. Then Gorn's got minus one evasion. Six plus to hit. Two speed. Damn. She missed twice. Ugh. Okay. That sucks. Okay, now she's going to activate her leather boots because I've got the affinities so she can move one space. So she's going to move one space away. Okay, that's the end of Lightning's. Damn it, that sucked. Because I wasted two... I had to waste two survival to do that. Okay. Oh, but she gained Fist and Tooth proficiency. So I gotta write that. There she goes, she gained Fist and Tooth proficiency. Okay. Now, the reason why I moved only one space with the lever things is because I'm hoping if I can just run right up to him, whatever AI card it is is going to be target closest survivor. So, Okay, let's go with Enry now with the bow. So we've got three speed. I already surged. Damn, I, I wish now I can't cat eye circle it. And you know what? Honestly, I forget what the trap even does for the Gorm. <laughs> uh, so that's not good. But I forget what it does. Uh, now, Kenna is a spear specialist. She could cancel the trap if I hit with it. Uh... Well, right now, no one's near him, so if the trap does something where it targets all adjacent survivors, it'd be the best time to pull it right now when Enry's shooting. So, I'm, you know what? I'm going to shoot with Enry now, and then I'll attack with Kenna. Okay, so Enry first. She's going to choose Faster Team Bow. Three speed, six plus accuracy. She's got minus two accuracy. Puts her at eight plus. Things got minus one evasion, so it's going to be a seven plus to hit three speed. No hits whatsoever, and she is not a bow specialist where she could re-roll. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't even think I want to surge. Uh, that's... <sighs> wow, that sucked. Hmm... 
One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and Kenda's going to spend one survival to dash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She can get to there and attack with the spear. Okay, so she's got the king spear. Or should I slam? I could have slammed. Should I slam? Might as well, right? Yeah, I'll slam. What the hell? So actually she'll move to here, slam, move it one way that way. So then now she'll spend her action to activate a melee weapon with plus two strength. If you activate a spear, apply that wound roll result to the next selected hit location. This attack. Okay, so she gets the plus two. Okay, so... So the slam. It's got minus one toughness. She also gains the momentum token. So she's got four momentum tokens now. It was a knockback one from slam. So he full moved it. Oh, and he's being a... I don't think I can slam it. That's right, it needs to be in a straight line. Oh wait, I still could, right? Where was she? She was right here, or right here. So one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four. Yeah, I still could. I just needed to move in a different way. So I still could. So I still can slam. It's just a, she's still moving in a straight line. She moved four more spaces in a straight line. Stop adjacent to it. Suffers knockback one and minus one toughness. Okay, so now it's got minus one toughness until the end of the round. Um, she does not suffer the minus two accuracy, so her spear is a uh, two speed, six plus. It's got minus one evasion, so that's five plus to hit. Yeah, two speed, five plus to hit. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Mighty Strike. She's got plus two strength now. Um, I forget if that is going to be for every single one or just the one hit. Yeah, it's till the end of the attack. So she got a perfect thing. So now she's got plus two strength from Mighty Strike. Okay. Here we go. Two. So one's a super dense, and the other one's on a failure, which I don't even think is possible. Uh, let's calculate it up if it's, if it's even possible. Okay, so she slammed. First hit's going to get plus two strength. Um, Yes, yeah, so the first hit's going to get plus two strength from me slamming from the screaming antelope set. Perfect hit's going to give her plus two strength, so that's four. She's got an eight four strength, that's eight strength, and then the king spear has a strength of three, so it's eleven strength total on this hit. So she can't even fail unless she rolls a one. Okay, so that's a hit. Uh, so she can't even fail, so that's a hit, or that's a wound, and then... If you wound with a spear, apply that wound roll result to the next selected hit location. Which, so now we supply the, that to that, so that's two wounds. One, two wounds. And she gets her spear proficiency. Okay. It's the end of that, end of that. Uh, these go there. What does he have left? He's got three. It's got seven hits left. It's not too bad. Okay, now with Thunder here. Um, let's rawhide headband to look at these two things before we move. Ooh, not good. 
Okay, let's look here. Which ones do we want? Random survivor and blind spot, or random threat in field of view in range. Okay, so flatten is it because no one's in the blind spot. So we're going with flatten. Headbutt, we don't want that because that's random. So flatten is going to go on top. That's what he's going to draw. Closest survivor in field of view in range, which we will move him into. Okay. Oh, yeah, move and attack. Turn the Gorm so the target is in the monster's blind spot. Oh, man. Oh, man. Turn the Gorm so the target is in the monster's blind spot. It's going to be a five speed. Oh, my gosh. So we don't want that. Uh, but the Gorm would be knocked down. Do I want that? The Gorm would be knocked down. That would make it so much easier to hit because all these people have minus two accuracy. Oh, man. Five speed, accuracy, two. Pl uh, yeah, we're going to go with flatten. Yep, we're going to go with flatten. I know it's crazy, but... Go with Flatten. So put Flatten on top. Now we're going to move him to here. Or, yeah, to here. Actually, he's going to do, he's going to do his stupid uh, wretch. Yep, so this is what we want. We want him all the way over here. This now makes him the closest survivor. So one, two, three, four. Okay, this might be insane. This could be the stupidest thing I've ever done. Okay, here we go. Flatten. Random survivor in blind spot. There's no one in the blind spot. Closest survivor in field of view in range. Right here. All right, here we go. Oh. I forgot. I'm going to spend a survival to, to, to survival the surgeon block. So he's down to four survival, but he's blocking. Here we go. Uh, turn the Gorm so the target is in the monster's blind spot. Okay. Here we go. Five speed. Six speed, actually, because he's got a plus one speed. I forgot about that. Six speed. Six speed. Ah, accuracy two plus. He's got four. Six speed, accuracy six plus. Here we go. Six speed, accuracy six plus. That's three hits. Um, yeah, it's going to be three hits. But we are going to block and dodge uh, as well. But first, let's see where these go. So three hits for three damage a piece. Three hits, three damage a piece. Let's see where they're going. Okay, uh, we are blocking the body and dodging the uh, legs. And we'll take the three damage to the head. So three damage to the head. Which is fine, because he had like eight there. So it's down to five to the head. <sighs> okay. Now... Um... Now the Gorm is knocked down. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, bash and knock back five. So he ignores Bash because of the leather armor. So he doesn't get knocked down. He just goes knock back five. Okay, he doesn't get knocked down. He ignored the Bash for the leather armor. Oh no, wait, no. He's not wearing leather armor. 
He ignores Bash from Shield Specialization. No, wait. He does not. Okay, that's not good. So he does get knocked down. Um, okay, so the Gorman's knocked, or the Gorman's knocked down now, but he got knocked down as well because Bash knocked him down. Okay, so that means his Rhythm Chaser evasion bonus is gone because he got knocked down, so that leaves him uh, which is two evasion because when you get knocked down with Rhythm Chaser you also lose all your evasion tokens, so the Flower Knight evasion token uh, you know what, I forgot to draw a tactic card um, oh well Whatever. So I'll play without the tactic card. That's my mistake. But yeah, when you get knocked down with Rhythm Chaser, you lose all, all your evasion tokens. So you would have lost the Flower Knight badge one as well. So now he's just down to two evasion. And then he stands up because of Fist and Tooth Mastery. So... Um, okay. So the Gorm is knocked down. Can it still perform muffs if it's knocked down? I don't know if it could. It's knocked down, right? It won't stand till the next round, so I don't think it can perform this. Yeah, it's not it's knocked down. And it's not like I knocked it down on the survivor's turn because the monster always stands at the beginning of the survivor's turn. Or the monster always stands at the beginning of the monster's turn. But he knocked itself down on its own turn. So I don't think it can perform this. So I'm going to just say it can't because it knocked itself down. Hmm. Deciding whether or not should be able to do that. I don't think it should be able to. Uh, I'm going to say that it can't because it knocked itself down. All right. Okay, so it's knocked down now. All right, let's... next round. Okay. Now that it's knocked down, all reactions are canceled. So, one, two, three, four, five. now's the best chance I could possibly get to wound it with the shield. Okay, so he's going to attack with the leather shield here. And it's going to be speed one. Man, he's got minus one accuracy because he's got one natural accuracy. So it's going to hit on a three plus because it's knocked down. So it's still only going to be a 1 speed 3 plus. So he does hit. Oh man. Oh, but all, re all reactions are cancelled because it's knocked down. Okay. So all I got to do is just wound it. So he's got plus 2 strength. He's got natural 3 strength. So that gives him a 5 strength. Uh, shield is 6 strength. So... He just needs a 5 plus to wound. That's it. 5 plus to wound. Good job, Thunder. You wounded with your shield. Let's get your proficiency. Uh, everyone's gotten proficiency now. So, uh, that's a wound. So, that's... What do I have to do? I have to do 6 damage to kill it. Can I do 6 damage? Can I do six damage? Well, I can try. So, three plus to hit with Emery with her three speed. Should I, you know what, I'm gonna, oh. Oh, can I circle the next one? 
Yeah, I'm going to cat eye circle with the next set of attacks, not this set. Okay. So, three plus to hit, Henry, three speed with best routine bell. Mm -mm, two hits. It's not bad. Okay. Um, a space adjacent to the. She's not adjacent to the monster, but she is attacking for the flank. Okay. So, first one. Now, Vespertine Bow has a six strength. She's got plus two strength. And then natural one strength, that's a nine. So it's going to be a two plus to hit, a plus to crit on this first one here with the failure reaction. Uh, what did I say? Three, three plus to wound, right? Nine. No, it's a two, two plus to wound, a plus to crit. Okay, so that's a wound. One wound. Okay, and now eight plus to crit, two plus to wound, because yeah, she's got one strength, plus two strength from the trait, gives three, best between bow strength six, that's nine, eleven toughness. So it's not a crit, but that is another wound. I have to reshuffle these cards. And okay, uh, now I will cat eye circle it with lightning. One, two, three. Oh man! Oh, impossible. The death blow came up, but uh, he's got four wounds left. Uh, so all these are canceled, unless something's going to cause him to stand. Uh, okay, so all these are canceled. I'll put the death blow on the bottom Just in case some kind of craziness happens that I can cause the death blow. Don't know what that would be uh, I'm just gonna surge with Enri so that brings her down to one survival Again uh, So she's got minus two or it's three plus to hit because the thing's knocked down Are you hmm? One hit. Very upsetting. Two plus to wound, eight plus to crit. Oh my gosh, this is very upsetting. Very upsetting. I am displeased at the results of this. Okay. Uh, Kenna, four plus four left, so you have to kill it. So let's, uh, you don't, it's three plus to hit with your King Spear here, so let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, so that's two hits. We know what these are, it's a death blow, it definitely can't happen. She is attacking from the flank now, so good for her. So we'll do this one first, attacking from the flank. So she gets a plus two strength, she's got a natural four, that's six strength. She doesn't gain any bonus strength because she's not uh, that low on the hunt experience. So it's going to be a six strength, King Spear's a nine, so that's going to be a... What is it? Yeah, so... It's nine, so two. Okay, well that's a crit. Um, turn the Gorn to face the opposite board edge and... F oh, this is terrible! A critical is terrible! It makes it stand up! Oh... Okay, well that's a critical. One that's a wound. Oh, a critical is terrible. Turn the gorm to face the opposite board edge and full move forward in a straight line. At the end of the movement the knock monster is knocked down. Oh, that is
Deathblow gets discarded. That's the worst critical ever. And... Turn the Gorn the face of the opposite board edge and full move forward in a straight line. So it stands up. That was the worst critical ever. And full move. So nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, all the way to here. Uh, so... Knocked down, but who cares? Oh my gosh, that is this that is bad. <laughs> that is really bad. Okay, um, so you're no longer knocked down after collision. So he just gets the knockback five, one, two, three, four, five, all the way over there. This is terrible. This was terrible. I could die. <laughs> I could lose like the entire showdown now. Well, I doubt the entire, but maybe. It's only got three hits left, but the tank could die now. Or someone else because of the stupid wretch here. This is just, this just got really bad. Really bad. Okay, if this is flattened, this is really bad. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Random survivor blind spot. Closest survivor in field of view in range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the tank is in range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She's also in range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She is also in range. The only person not in range is Henry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, tens a reroll. Okay, good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, tens a reroll. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, Kenna, this is such not a good thing. Such not a good thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. Oh my gosh, such not a good thing. Oh my gosh, that's such not a good thing. Uh, turn the gorm so that the mon uh, the target is in the monster's blind spot. Oh my gosh. So wait, I didn't even have to turn the face. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. It was just going to move anyway. So it was here. Doesn't even need to turn the face. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Literally just walks backwards. So yeah, it just went do 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 walked backwards the whole way. Moonwalked right over to Kenna. This is so bad. Oh my gosh, this is so bad. Six speed accuracy a lot. Let's see. Uh six speed. She's got two evasion. It's got minus one accuracy. So it's going to be a 6 speed hitting on a 5 plus. 6 speed, 5 plus. This is so bad. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of 1s though. 6 speed, 5 plus. Okay, well it only hits 3 times. Uh, I'm going to dodge one of these. Oh, uh, man. Okay, so it's going to be damaged 3 plus after each one. 3 plus after each one. Oh, she can handle that. She can handle this. Uh, do I even need to dodge one? Yeah, I might as well. I, I'll dodge one. I'll dodge the body. One body. So that brings her down to 4 survival. Uh, yeah, I'll dodge one body. So, 
Three damage to the body, it brings her down to one armor. Uh, and then uh, to the waist, brings her down to two armor. Okay, and then after damage, bash, knockback five. And then it knocks itself down. So bash, one, two, three, four, five. It's fine, whatever. She can just move back. Fizz and Tooth Mastery, she stands up after Bash. And the Gorm is knocked down. So that cancels anything else that would happen. Knocked down. Just, let's just kill it, Henry. It's knocked down. Uh, we're going to do... Can I circle it? Look at the next three cards. Two, whoops. Three cards. Oh my gosh, it's not the trap, which is great. Uh, all these things are canceled, but let's look at the criticals because it might cause it to move. Okay, none of these cause it to move, so let's just put this one on the bottom. Or no, the failure reaction on the top because that's all failure reactions are canceled. So we'll put the failure reaction on the top while it's knocked down and everything's canceled. Uh, it's got three hits left. Uh, how about you just kill it? Wouldn't that be great? One, two, three, four, five. Henry, you hit on a three plus. You stupid. So top two. Um, what I say, so hitting on a, she's got plus two strength. Vesper Team Bow has six strength, that makes eight. She's got a natural one strength, that's nine. Toughness of 11. So wounding on a two, critting on a eight. That's a critical, oops. The monsters dribbles blood all around. Survivors in the vomit zone gain plus three insanity. Who cares? That's a wound, so one wound. So now all that's left is flattened, or flattened, whatever. Two plus uh, eight. Okay, so that's another wound. So flattened's now gone. I just need to wound it one more time. Uh, I don't want to draw any more cards than I need to. I know the next one card. The next one card is not the trap. So... Who would have a lot of bad accuracy? Uh, Kenna could cancel the trap. Okay, so we'll do Kenna. One, two, three, four. She's not going to get in the blind spot. She'll stop right there. Um, she doesn't have any bonus accuracy, so... I think has got minus one evasion. She hits on a three... Oh, it's knocked down. She hits on a three plus. I keep forgetting it's knocked down. i got to put the token here so I remember Okay, so three plus to hit. Uh, just hit it once. Ah! Oh, don't be a trap. Uh, eh, eh, eh. Oh, it's not. Oh, this is the luckiest thing ever. Ah, uh, this is amazing. Okay, so we'll just do this first one here. Uh... Yep, sure, whatever. This first one here. Okay, what do you get, Kenna? So, six, or it's a three strength. She's got four strength. It's got seven strength here. Uh, she's not attacking from the flank. So, seven strength for toughness. So, a four plus to hit. Four plus to hit. That's a wound. Okay. She killed it. Kenna killed it. Oh, Kenna killed it. Good job, uh, Kenna, for killing that. Thank you. Now let's do... <sighs> okay, let's do this. Um... Where is it? Fetid Grotto. 
During the aftermath, all survivors make a blind exit. So let's do the blind exit. Second is authors, survivors attempt to investigate the whole. Ugh. Okay. Uh, okay. So first one is lightning. Okay, so the whole reason why I brought lightning with her fist and tooth because if I could get acid palms, so if she could roll a 7, 8, or a 9 with lightning right now, 7, 8, or a 9, that is amazing. 7, 8, or a 9. 7, 8, or 9. Oh my gosh, I rolled an 8. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Oh my gosh. Whew made this whole thing worth it because this thing was not going to be worth it at all because of um, the lantern what, hands of heat. Okay, so lightning, you rolled an eight. Crawling on your hands and knees to avoid the burning mists. Pools of acid burn your limbs. Gain the acid palms ability and suffer minus one permanent movement. Okay, so she has acid palms now. Oh, that's amazing. But she's only got four movement. Whatever. Okay, what else happens? If you have the legendary lungs secret fighting art, you spend extra time exploring and emerge with acid gland gorm resource. Don't care. Okay, lightning. Now thunder. <sighs> that's probably awful. I probably just lost my new tank. Oh, man. You stumble, lost, and gagging in the caustic mist. The aggravating effects of your surroundings take their toll. Suffer minus one permanent strength. You emerge dragging one basic resource. Okay, basic resource. Let's get that. And he's going to get minus one permanent strength. Okay. Monster organ, whatever. I'll leave that deck there. Uh, minus one permanent strength, which is fine. He's down to just two strength, which I don't care because he's a tank anyway. I mean, it helps to wound with a shield, but whatever. Okay. Oof, this is so bad. Some of these things can be so bad. Okay, now Enry. A ten. What is that? Grasping in the dense, thick mist, you struggle to breathe. You may spend three survival to gain legendary lungs. But nope, you can't do anything. So a ten is just nothing. Because she has no, she doesn't have three survival. Kenna, she has three survival. Can you get legendary lungs? I guess that'd be pretty neat. Uh, eight, 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 eight. Ah. Crawling on your hands and knees to avoid burning mists. Pools of acid burn your limbs. Gain acid palms ability and suffer minus one permanent movement. That sucks. That Kenna got minus one permanent movement. Did not really want that to happen. Uh, she needs to move four spaces. Actually makes slam a little bit better. Actually that might have been, because now I don't need to move the full five. I mean it sucks the slam distance is shorter, but the full move now is only a four for her. Huh. Actually, minus one movement might have been better than I thought. I have to rethink. I have to think about this. Minus one permanent movement. If you have legendary long secret fighting arc, she does not. Uh, but she does have acid palms now, which doesn't really matter. Okay, um, that's it. Now we do the regular old aftermath. So. Doing this as the old books say, you only gain one hunt experience for these old expansions. Uh, and you gain crappy resource. So you only gain one hunt experience for fighting a level two. So causes Kenna to age. 
but everyone else only gains one, which is fine, which is one of the reasons why I brought Kenna, because I wasn't too worried. She is, this is age three for her, um, but gaining only the one experience is fine. So let's quickly age her up. Age three for Kenna. Age three. Here we go. Oops. I just realized I left that dice there. Age three for Kenna. 16. Age three. 16. Draw two random fighting arts and gain one. Cool. Cool, cool. Two random fighting arts and gain one. So she has Mighty Strike, which is awesome. She has Propulsion Drive, which is also awesome. She's a leader, which is probably the one that's going to be re removed. Um, unless we draw crap. But hopefully not. That, okay. I mean, it's not even a question. I'll show the two I drew, but... So, like I said, she already has Mighty Strike. But now... She's going to be a uh, combo master on top of that. So, on a perfect hit now, she makes an additional attack. Not only will she gain two strength, but... So her perfect hit synergy is awesome. So now she's a combo master. Cool. Let's get rid of leader. Combo master now. She's actually doing pretty good. Okay. Um, weapon proficiency I already did with. Now rewards. So the Song of the Brave, we get to remove Gorm Climate finally. It's been like 10 years. <laughs> so Gorm Climate is removed. That's awesome. We are going to get four basic resources and six Gorm resources. So we will do the four basic and then the six Gorm. So one, whatever that is. Two, three, four basic. Please be a hide. Love juice. Not, no. <laughs> Just no. Okay, and now the, the Gorm. And level two is six Gorm resources. One, two, three, four, Five, six score resources. Pretty good. We'll go in that for the settlement phase. We'll go over all of this. So that is the end of the level two Gorm showdown. We will now go back to the settlement event. And uh, that's going to be quite a long one. So thank you so much for watching. The amount of support that this has been getting is, like, so humbling. Um, I just thank everyone who watches. Hopefully the content remains enjoyable. I almost had a heart attack when that Gorm decided to run away on that critical, because I knew I had a chance to draw like flatten, and then the fact that it was flattened... Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> so, um, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the settlement event. Have a great day.